In August 2002, the Ontario Police reported the disappearance of four high school students. The only clues about the possible whereabouts of the young people were some maps drawn and written found in the home of one of the missing students, Katrin Ziegler. The police focused on patrolling the vicinity of the school, as well as less crowded wooded areas. After five days of searching, four abandoned backpacks were found on the side of an unnamed road. Some identification documents confirmed the identities of the four lost boys. The search team ventured into the dense forest, following any trace that indicated the location of the students. After a few hours, they found nothing but trees, bushes, and endless muddy paths, until they came across a rather peculiar area. Monoliths, with highly oxidized religious symbols, were found scattered for several miles around. In the same area, huge excavated pits were found, but they were completely empty. A possible cemetery was suspected, however, no headstones were found, nor were there any records of a graveyard in the area. In the depths of the forest, the police abruptly came across a large ancient building. Next to it a couple of cabins and sheds. All of them had the inscription of a large insect drawn in vivid colors. The surrounding areas were searched, and no human or animal activity was reported. When the police entered the mansion, the first thing they found was a rudimentary altar and on it, a moth of enormous proportions, apparently preserved through taxidermy. In the other rooms, similar crucifixes to those found scattered around the forest were found, as well as huge drawings referring to the large insect. One of the books found on one of the altars was titled, The Resurrection of M. Rohoi, the same name found on inscriptions of vessels and crucifixes. A few small doors and hatches were found inside the mansion, all leading to the basement. Once underground, the police found a large room full of chains with apparently religious symbols. Crucifixes and figures of strange insects seemed to be the trend. One of the two hallways in the basement led to a small room where four statues of men were found in a prayer position around a small hole filled with mud. The other corridor, much longer, seemed to extend several meters beyond the main house. About 20 meters ahead, a door separated the hallway. The police reported a strong smell of ammonia and formic acid. Due to the risk of poisoning, quick photographs were taken and there was no contact with what was found inside the room. During the evening, a special team cordoned off the surroundings of the mansion and completely covered it with a tarp. Due to the toxicity of the location, it was decided to send in a specialized group for handling highly volatile substances. On the highest floor, the specialized team went through every room, each of which had drawings of giant insects. However, the most impactful discovery was made upon entering the attic, where they found the same bodies wrapped in plastic, just like in the basement, but these had visibly strange and hardly recognizable heads. The experts determined two possibilities. First, they could possibly be surgically intervened corpses. Second, corpses of hyper-developed larvae in a partial state of dissection. Additionally, a portrait of a man was found who may have been one of the leaders of the cult, 
or a revered figure. Finally, the Ontario government decided that the mansion should be burned immediately and covered with a steel dome, with permanent military surveillance until the case was resolved and the place completely secured.